Welcome to another edition of Pause for Thought with me, Greg. We see that the government is slowly but surely releasing the regulations and the situation for lockdown. But many are still fearful, particularly with the media keep on ongoing with the negative sides of the uh, uh, ongoing saga. And some people are fearful because they don't know whether to go out, whether to do as, as the government say, or what, because they're frightened of a second wave. <clears throat> so how do we find peace and protection amidst the pandemic? Fear is not from the Lord. True love casts out all fear, and God is love. But in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything, tell God your needs, and don't forget to thank him for your prayers that are answered. So turn off the news, <laughs> focus on heaven, pray specifically honest prayers, and have a thankful heart. Remember, we've talked over these weeks about having a broken and contrite spirit, and that's having a repentant heart, not a pride-filled heart, a humble heart, recognizing who God is. You know, Solomon's prayer in 2 Chronicles 7.14, if my people, that's people who believe in Jesus, in God, who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, true repentance, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. And I'm grateful for the way in which the Lord has protected us, protected all the people within our five churches, and within our area. And when you think about it, God is merciful. He even spared, as we talked about a few, a few times ago, the people of Nineveh when they repented and fasted and prayed. And Jonah came and gave them a message from the Lord. If you can, pray with others. You know, currently we're praying both at Western and Tuxford via Zoom. It's really important to pray. When two agree on anything, the Lord listens intently, as long as we're praying within what it says in Scripture. We need to also be asking for wisdom. Because sometimes the Lord is using these difficult situations to build character. And we squirm around. I remember many years ago when I had a cataract operation and I was 50, 50 years old. <laughs> and they gave me general, uh, general anesthetic, which they don't normally do when they do a cataract. Well, that was because I was young and I would move and squirm around too much and it would make it more difficult for the cataract operation. I was delighted because I didn't want to see what they were doing anyway. But it's the same with us. Sometimes there are things like an operation where we need it either dealing with or cutting out. But if we're squirming all over the place, it makes it that much more difficult and often impossible. In James, chapter 1, when it talks about trials and temptations, starting at verse 2, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Consider it pure joy. It's not, not easy when it's happening. Why? Because you know 
that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. It goes on, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. And if we lack faith, ask the Lord for faith, because faith is a gift. And faith is believing in things that we can't see. If we think of Psalm 91, it's a really important psalm because it's a, a psalm that can be used for protection. Beginning of verse 2. God alone is my refuge and my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. He rescues me from every trap and protects me from the fatal plague. He shields you with his wings. They will shelter you. His faithful promises are your armor. And you only know that when you know what the promises are, and that's if you read the word. You don't need to be afraid of the dark, nor fear the dangers of the day, nor the dread that the plagues of darkness, nor disasters in the morning. Though a thousand may fall at your side, though ten thousand all around, no evil will touch you. I will see how the wicked are punished, but I will not share it, for Jehovah is my refuge. I choose the God above all gods to shelter me. How then can evil overtake me or any plague come near me? For he commands his angels to protect wherever I go. They will steady you with their hands to keep you from stumbling against the rocks on the trail. You can safely meet a lion or step on poisonous snakes, yes, even trample them beneath your feet. For the Lord says, because he loves me, I will rescue him. I will make him great because he trusts in my name. When he calls on me, I will answer. I will be with him in trouble and rescue him and honor him. I will satisfy him with a full life and give him my salvation. And I find in a situation which is challenging or difficult, To put my name into the scripture. Though a thousand may fall at my side, though ten thousand all around me, the evil will not touch me. I will see how the wicked are punished, but I will not share in it. For he orders his angels to protect me wherever I go, they will steady me with their hands to keep me from stumbling against the rock. God alone is Gre Gregory's refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I am trusting him, for he rescues me from every trap and protects me from the fatal plague. He will shield me, Greg, with his wings. Now, sometimes faith is a challenge because faith is believing in something that we can't see. 
but I would point you to Hebrews chapter 11. And here are examples of faith in action. Now faith, verse 1, is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made of what is visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain. By faith, he was commended as righteous. And God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he's dead. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness. That is, in keeping with faith. He heard God speaking in his still small voice and acted upon it. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he was later received as an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he didn't know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a forest country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around for seven days. And what more shall I say? Verse 32. I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, gained what was promised, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle, routed foreign armies, women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. The world was not worthy of them. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what was promised, since God had planted and planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. And then it goes on. Therefore, in chapter 12, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. An amazing scripture. And all that faith came about because they heard from God, because they listened. And they acted upon it, even though they didn't know where they were going, what they were doing, and why they were doing it. It's like this scripture here, be still and know that I am God. Because God often speaks in a whisper. 
and confirms it through his word. And sometimes even through somebody else who's been praying, who knows nothing about it independently. And I've told you that we really need to test everything. And we also need to know the Bible because once we know the Bible, we can test things because there are many people who teach things which are to tickle our ears rather than the truth. Because the truth can be difficult sometimes and many people don't want to hear the truth. So let's finish with another Psalm, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. And notice it's the same beginning as it was in Psalm 91. He is an ever-present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with surging, we won't fear. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her and she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he's brought on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow, shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Be still and know that he is God. God's answers are perfect. They might not be what we want. This is why we're called to look up, put our trust in Jesus, the perfecter of our faith. Think of things which are eternal, not things which rust and decay and pass. We've seen with the pandemic how overnight everything that we put our trust in, our money, our jobs, even our relationships with one another, can't even hug people. All of it was taken away like that. It's made many of us see and think and appreciate things which are really important. But it's only when we've had time to stop and think and reflect and be quiet. So be still and know that he is God, the creator of all things, the sustainer of all things, the lover of our souls, our sovereign, our king, our lord of lords, our king of kings. who showed us how much and how deep and high and wide is his love for us. By pouring out everything he had. The God who gives us free will. And that's the problem with love, isn't it? We open our hearts, we become vulnerable. And the danger is that we can be hurt because it's rejected, refuted, attacked. But he did it anyway. 
And so, Heavenly Father, we praise you for sending Jesus. We praise you that although things are unstable all around, we are not to fear, but to trust in you, our God of love, because true love casts out all fear. We praise you for your provision, for sustaining us, protecting us, keeping us safe from this pestilence. We pray, Lord, that you forgive our sins and heal our land. That you pour out your Holy Spirit afresh. That the lessons that we have learned over this four month period will not be lost. And that you will awaken our nation once again to its Christian foundations and heritage that the earth may be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, all whom you love, cherish, and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. So until next time, it's a big God bless you from me, Greg. Bye.